I have $50,000 worth of Bitcoin and I'm not even impressed. I'm gonna tell you why I'm not impressed. I'm gonna tell you why you should be careful with Bitcoin. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu. If you want some generational wealth, if you wanna learn how to hustle, if you wanna learn how to build a business, be sure to slap that subscribe button. Long time ago, about seven, eight years ago, I bought a lot of Bitcoin and I looked in there today and it's worth $51,000. Big whoop. Now I know you're like, hey, yeah, you know, you got some of that Bitcoin. Yeah, 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 you got $50,000. Okay, here's my problem with this. Let's say I was broke Dick Danny and I had $50,000 worth of Bitcoin. What would I do? Since I'm broke Dick Danny, I would cash it in. Then I would have no more Bitcoin. One of the problems with Bitcoin is if you reduce your position, meaning you spend some, you lose value. As an investment, it can be good. You really can't do anything with it if you go ahead and spend it down. I know a lot of people here are going, hey man, I just want some Bitcoin. You don't want that $51,000, give it to me. I know what to do with it. Cause I'm broke Dick Danny. Mindset that comes with the Bitcoin craze. And I think it's very speculative. And since I didn't really spend anything, if it crashes, I don't really care. You got to have more than Bitcoin going on. 2009, about two and a half, three years before I bought Bitcoin, I started this company. And collectively, this company has made over $7 million. I bought some Bitcoin real cheap and I started a company real cheap. If you really want to put yourself in a good position, sure, go ahead and get some Bitcoin, knock yourself out. But if you really want to cement your position, you should start a company and you should start your company cheap. You should be working on getting that sweat equity. You should be working on creating something lasting because there's a lot of talk about the old economies dying, which is true. But there's not a lot of talk about the new creative economy that is replacing it. There was this guy, his name D. Kirk, I think. He did a rap song to get a job at VaynerMedia. And I looked at what he did. Now, Kirk doesn't have cash, but he has creative intellectual assets. He has creative cash. And this is the thing. With creative cash, you can have, really have no physical cash and still make millions of dollars. I started this company with a $289 investment and I did not reinvest in the company for two years. And at that two year point, we had done almost a million dollars. Think about that. So if you know you gotta get Bitcoin, go ahead and get your Bitcoin, but you should also work on learning how to code. You should also work on learning how to do graphic design. You should also work on learning how to tell a story. You should also work on writing scripts. You should also work on creating films. You should also, you see where I'm going? If you, it, let, let's just go ahead and just classify and isolate it to two skill sets. If you knew how to do Photoshop, and you knew how to make videos, you could make a million dollars. If you were really, really good with those two skill sets. That puts a little different spin on it because you know I know a lot of people are going crazy about Bitcoin and I don't think Bitcoin is the value play. I think the blockchain technology behind Bitcoin is where the real action is going to be. You can use that technology for tickets. You can, I mean, there's so many things that you can use that technology for. And I think that's going to be where the big money is. The deployment of that blockchain technology across medical, across uh, movie. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be sick what's going to happen with the blockchain technology. But it's inherently just buying Bitcoin and holding it and hoping to get rich is a very poor strategy. Just like I said, you know, 51,000, okay, big whoop. The minute that I start spending it, I reduce my equity position. That's the problem with Bitcoin. You can get some you can get some money, you can get some wealth, but the minute you start spending, 
it's it's like nothing. And you know, and also to be real, fifty-one thousand dollars. If you don't have it, seems like a million. I get that. But fifty-one thousand dollars in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of money. Now, on that note, is more than enough to start virtually any kind of company. Uh, it is more than enough. Well, really, let's step back from that. If you want to start a company, I think you should start a company based upon creative assets. Uh, you should start a company based upon your intellectual property because that's where I'm going. I used to be a physical property, physical asset type dude, and now I'm blending it, but I'm going to have a heavy concentration in intellectual property. I'll give you an example. The song, Baby Got Back, right? It's made $110 million over like 18, 19 years. One song. One piece of creative property. One. We're living in some very exciting times if you want to embrace the times that we're in. You know, going back to the guy that did that mashup for Gary V. That guy is rich. He's not rich in, quote, money. He's rich in talent and intellectual property and he will get the money. You know, check it out. The video where, you know, Gary V offers him the job. If you'll notice, Gary V does not overspeak this dude once. That is how in awe he is of his creative chops. Think about that, because let's think, and I'm having the same problem. Because if you find a creative person who's really good and knows their worth, they're very hard to deal with. If you find a creative person like this guy who is still coming up and doesn't realize his worth, that is the ticket. That is the ticket because right now uh, I got a guy in Amsterdam. He's doing me some t-shirts and I'm steadily looking for someone to bring in-house on the team who has the skill sets. And one of the ways that I do this is I say, like, hey, you know, here is a t-shirt. Make this design better with limited instruction because I want to see their style. I want to see their ability, right? And it's very challenging to find good people who can deploy wonderful art. And I'm up to the challenge. And continue to look for that person. I'm going to continue to be out there. And, you know, like, all right. And I know every time I put out there, I'm hiring people like, hey, and they'll send me a resume. Here, here's a few tips. You send me a resume and I'm looking for graphic designers. I'm looking for art people. And your last five jobs for anything other than being a graphic designer. What do you think is going to happen to that resume? I'm going to trash it. You're not a designer. <laughs> you, you don't have any recent experience. And that is the thing that is hard for a lot of people to accept. Oh, pumpkin farm. That's interesting. A lot of people to accept is like, hey, you know, I, I have some artistic ability. I'm not looking for someone with some artistic ability. I'm looking for someone who can actually sketch, hand sketch, and has all of the accompanying skills to render that through Photoshop so we can transfer the design to a t-shirt, we can transfer the design to the blog, we can transfer the design to the YouTube channel, and so on and so forth. But, yo, every time I say I'm looking, yeah, send me your resume. And if it doesn't have what we're looking for on it, it's gonna get trashed which is like so far 100% have been trashed because also I'm probably not going to hire somebody uh, who's coming from the YouTube channel because there's almost like this awe thing. I'm gonna tell you a dirty story. I was dating this chick and this was back when my name was Onyx Prose because I used to write poetry. And I used to put it on Black Planet and I used to put it on black voices. And I met this chick who liked my poetry and she was local and we started dating. And this is what this trick said. I'm having dinner with Onyx Pros. And it made me feel objectified because she was really hyped because I was Onyx Pros, not Glendon Cameron, but Onyx Pros. And that's the kind of thing that happens if I hire someone from YouTube where they're not like, um, I don't know. If you like the content of this channel, you should. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. 
And also, be sure to get on my give me your number list. And let me tell you how that works. Give me your number, and every time I do a live stream or a video, I'll just send you an alert, and we get around all this PayPal, this, uh, well, around this YouTube notification thing, which does not work. <laughs> it just doesn't. So that way you can get the videos and be good to go. So with that, I'm out. Because I, I think I'm going to go back and get a pumpkin. I, I have a feeling that's going to happen.